Because we've been seeing that to play uh, sport for God's glory, we need to know what he's like. And yesterday we saw that he was eternal, he was infinite, and he's almighty. And that we need to meet with him uh, before we compete. We need to be transformed. We need to let the monumental news that we're learning about in the evening meetings uh, and let him and and his spirit transform us before we play. And we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. We're starting to understand that. But today, in the next couple of days with, with them, we're going to get a bit more practical. Like how does this actually uh, look to compete when we're on the pitch? Um, and we've said before, you can bring glory um, to someone by copying them. Uh, imitation is the highest form of flattery. And so we're going to look more at that today. How can we actually get it, start to get even more practical in what this looks like. We're going to be looking for our book this morning, just a little, uh, little paragraph from there, Don't Waste Your Sport. Um, let me open it up. And it says this, um, talking about 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, so our memory verse, he says this, To bring glory to God as athletes, we play sports in a way that draws our attention to God's greatness instead of our own. This involves much more than kneeling in the end zone or pointing to the sky. You see, too often Christian athletes participate in sports without understanding the potential sports have for God's glory. We let culture, rather than scripture, define our priorities and passions. We're all vulnerable to this. Here are some signs, sure signs, of misdirected priorities. We have no higher purpose than winning. We are more concerned about improving athletic skill than growing in godliness. We use sports to make much of ourselves rather than glorifying God through godly actions. So it's mentioned there that glorifying God is much more than um, outward gestures and symbols. Is there any time, Em, in your netball or generally in sport where you've seen people try and bring glory to God where it seems quite um, external? Yeah, yeah. So if you think about like athletes who might write like a verse on their shoe or like wear a cross and um, yeah, make it really obvious, or even these sports plus wristbands where like it's a, a reminder not to waste our sport. But but yeah, really they're external actions. But the Bible challenges us to um, have an internal change um, to be different inside. So in this booklet here. I think it'll be up on the screen maybe for you as well. Uh, it says, playing sport. There you go. Oh, yeah, there we go. Playing sport to the glory of God <coughs> must, be in, uh, must be primary. Athletic, athletic ability and achievements must be secondary. And that means every time we train, compete, are in the changing rooms, hanging out after a game, our priority will be to worship God apply the gospel to our hearts and to become more like Christ. Mm. That's a big line there, apply the gospel, the monumental news to our hearts. We've heard about it a lot this week and we, we kind of know it, but how do we actually apply it and, and out of hearing it, actually live it out in our lives? Is, is there any way you, you can think about that? Yeah, mm. yeah, it is, it is a, definitely a challenge. Um, one area that I think of is to be a grateful athlete. So when I pr- play, um, I think about um, what God has done for us on the cross. So last night we looked at um, that no one is good. No one, not one person um, is good. But Jesus paid it all for us. Like he mended that. He took it for us and he's given us this free gift um, that is monumental this free gift and so because of this monumental news where I can play with gratefulness in my heart and that gives me great joy when I play that I can play um, yeah for God when I play mm. so there's this deep sense of gratefulness of, of thankfulness mm. as you play and we've been looking at Romans and just a quick uh, little verse at the start of Romans is quite interesting in chapter 1, verse 21, it says this. It says, For they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish ideas were darkened. Mm-hmm. And in that bit, it's saying basically, and the bits around it, saying everyone knows that God exists. It's clear from what we see around us. You know something of that he's eternal and he's infinite. Everyone has an, an innate knowledge of it. 
But we don't thank God for it. So that's in contrast to what you're saying. You're saying, actually, let's play sport and be very mindful and thankful of what he's done for us. So good. That's start to get a bit more tangible. Let's be really thankful when we're playing sport. Yeah. Um, we've been looking at the monumental news. We've been looking at Jesus on the cross. We've seen that he's fully God. He's the creator of the whole world. And yet he decides, as we're going to see more tonight as well, he decides to lay his life down for us and rescue us and let, let himself be killed on a cross. If you like, he's in the Premier League and he's become the water boy just so that we can, we can follow him. And, and our memory verse song is saying we follow the example that is set by, for us by Christ. Mm. And what an example of humility, of, of, of laying himself down. Is that something you can kind of imitate in your sport, that hum- humility? Yeah, absolutely. I, what comes to mind is actually where I've done this poorly. Um, so playing netball, it's my sport. Um, and there was, was this one game, it was a year or two ago now, and I was playing defence and there was this player that just like kept grabbing my arm at rebounds. Can't do that in netball, for those of you who play in second sport gets the rules but the refs weren't seeing it um, and I was getting really frustrated inside and so I was like oh well like I like the other person's getting the ball all the time like this is no good like I'm getting no glory I'm getting no rebounds I'm getting no intercepts because this player kept doing this thing against the rules so I grabbed back and I did that same thing and and no one noticed I got away with it the umpires didn't call it they didn't call her they didn't call me my team were like oh great you're getting the rebounds this is awesome and I'm like yeah this is awesome look at me I'm doing good and then in the car on the way home I, I'm not a crier at all but I don't cry and I just broke down like God just convicted me so strongly that I had made it about myself and that I'd put the glory on me and not on God. And I just cried. I pulled over. I couldn't keep driving. I just pulled over and cried and cried out to God and said, God, I'm so sorry that I have taken the glory from you. I haven't been humble in how I played. And I've been so prideful in doing that um, in myself. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, being honest with us. Um, um, it is really helpful to, to hear that because we heard last night as Jez, uh, Dino was sharing in our talk that um, we are all, the word you Bible uses the word sinful, we're all fallen short, there's no one righteous, not even one. So when we look at humility, it's actually when you're through the eyes of the gospel, it's actually saying, no, I believe that is true. And that gives us the humility to, to realise, actually, I haven't got it all together and I need to keep coming back to you. And trying to understand, yeah, again and again, and trying to apply this gospel, um, this monumental news to my, to my heart. So, yeah, thanks for sharing that. So we've said grateful, being thankful, being, being humble, realising who you really are before God. And the third way um, we can think of today is being a servant athlete. Again, following Jesus' example, he lays his life down, makes himself nothing, even though he's the creator of the universe, with this real servant heart. I wonder, again, is there something that you, you've you seen or that you, you've experienced in terms of copying that servanthood in your, mm. in your team? Yeah. So I was actually reflecting yesterday at the end of today and just in our time in Sports Plus in the second sport when I played netball particularly and then uh, in Team Challenge after that. And, like, it's really great. We can serve our teams by, like, picking up the cones at the end of Team Challenge or, like clearing like our teammates dinner plates at a dinner time or at breakfast time but like Jesus served by dying on a cross like that cost him that hurt so it's easy to serve when like it doesn't cost us anything like it doesn't cost me anything to go and pick up some cones but in, in sec, second sport I joined in the netball that's my sport I want to play um, really excited to play and everyone there was really excited to play and we had some subs and we had to like sub off and have some time off and for me that was a real challenge that that would hurt to come off because I want to play and everyone I feel was the same like I could see it in the room like there, there were some people that that did serve that went you could see they really wanted to play but they went nah I'll give it I'll give that bib to you. Um, And same in in Team Challenge. Like, I see it in Team Challenge as well. Like, we're in these countries with these people from these different sports, these different backgrounds, these different ages. And we've kind of been, like, 
plopped together in this team that might not be like it's might not be with our friends, might not be with people with similar sports to us, where this bit of a mismatch. And I guess we, we have this choice, like we can choose to to serve our team, and I can see that in some of these athletes here that they're choosing to serve their team um, by like encouraging one another, uplifting one another, um, and things like that, even if their team is not who they would choose as their team because it's not with their mates. Um, and so, it, again, that it's when that hurts. Like, mm. that's, that's when that servant... Um, that servant athlete, yeah. That's, yeah. that's profound, Emily. Thanks for sharing that. That when it hurts, that's when we're really testing that we are mm. serving and, and giving something of ourselves to someone else. It could be our teammates, or even think about the umpires and, and, and your opposition. How, mm. how do you how do you serve them as well? So hopefully that's helping you guys today to start to think a bit more what it means to bring glory to God through your sport. <laughs> so where have we got this morning? Um, Above winning, uh, a Christian, as Christians, our priority is to bring God glory to God by applying the gospel to our hearts. It's not just about these out- outward actions. It's about a deep transformation in our heart that we can't do, we can only bring to God. But it will lead to us being thankful, being humble, being a servant athlete as we compete. It is tricky, though, because we're talking about some tangible examples, and so, you know, everyone today might decide that because Emma said something, they're going to go out and just copy it. Again, not because the gospel has changed it, just because you're copying someone else. Yeah. So it's tricky because it's our human nature. We like to feel like, especially sports people, we like to feel like we're making it. We like to feel like we've done something, we've achieved something by our own efforts. And we forget so quickly the message that Herman brought on Monday night, saying it's powerful news, it's not what we can achieve, it's what Jesus achieves on the cross that changes us. Um, and we do, we need a heart, a heart change. We don't just want band-aids on the outside, <coughs> covering up the symptoms of our heart, making it look like we're a good player. We need that gospel. We need to continually remind ourselves of what Jesus has done. And that's why we do it at Sports Plus every year, because we don't want to move on from it. We just need, like your example, stopping after a game and reminding yourself of and coming yourself to God in prayer. So I encourage us to do that. Before we, we play sport today, and we'll do that in a minute, let's pray. Let's bring ourselves before God and ask him to change us and ask him to help us to think through the way we train and compete uh, in, the cha- in the changing rooms and let our whole life, our whole sport, become worship to him, uh, become something that can be used for him 